So in this video, we're going to look at another oxidation reduction titration, and we're going to determine the percentage weight per volume of sodium hypochloride present in household bleach. So as I've done in all my titration videos so far, it's important to know where your reactants are in your reaction at all times. So in our burette, in the reaction, we're going to have a sodium thiosulfate solution of known concentration. In our pipette and conical flask, you're going to have a bleach solution of unknown concentration containing excess sulfuric acid and excess potassium iodide. Our indicator in this experiment will be starch and the colour change is from blue-black to colourless. So some sample questions that can come up for this experiment. Why is it necessary to dilute the bleach? So the bleach is too concentrated if it's not diluted and that would mean that a large volume of sodium thiosulfate would be required for the reaction to go to completion. Then it says why is sulfuric acid used instead of hydrochloric acid? And using hydrochloric acid would cause chlorine gas to be produced and that is definitely not wanted. It says, why is the indicator not added until the solution in the conical flask becomes a pale or straw yellow? And the reason for that is if the starch is added at the beginning or in the early stages, the iodine present may become strongly absorbed onto the starch. And that would mean that the titration would be less accurate. For this experiment, the calculations are usually asking you to find the concentration of the dilute and original sodium hypochlorite solution in moles per litre, grams per litre and percentage weight per volume. You will always use first principles method to solve this. You can use the formula if you wish, but as I've stated in all previous videos, it has not worked in recent years. You'll need to use your skills from the mole chapter as well to help you with this and also look out for your dilution factor. So if we want to try and figure out the ratio that we're going to be using in our first principles calculation, we always get these two equations in our sodium hypochlorite bleach experiments. And if you note from the first balanced equation, we see that one mole of the hypochloride ion produces one mole of our iodine. So that starts off as a one is to one. But from that second balanced equation, then we can see that the second balanced equation shows that each mole of iodine reacts with two moles of thiosulfate. So we can see that each mole of iodine reacts with two moles of your thiosulfate. So that means that this one mole of iodine reacts with two moles of the thiosulfate. So my ratio is a one is to two ratio because you must have the hypochlorite ion is to your thiosulfate. So that is where the one is to two ratio comes from. So let's try um, a calculation. It says 25 centimeters cubed of bleach is diluted to 250 centimeters cubed. So I would straight away be writing in here that my dilution factor is 10. Then as we continue on, 25 centimeters cubed of this diluted solution uh, was added to excess potassium iodide and titrated against a 0 0.21 molar sodium thiosulfate solution. The average titration figure was 32.1 centimetres cubed. And these are the equations for the reactions. And it asks you to calculate the concentration of the sodium hypochlorite in diluted bleach and the original bleach in moles per litre, grams per litre and percentage weight per volume. So the first thing I suppose to do here will be the easiest will be to do your calculations for the diluted bleach first and then go and do your calculations for the original bleach. So the first calculation they ask you is for moles per litre. So once you see moles per litre, you know you're going to be using um, first principles. So step one of first principles asks us to find the moles of your standard solution in your titra volume. And to do that, you use the following formula, moles per litre multiplied by your 
tighter volume and you divide that by 1000. So the moles per litre of our standard solution, it's our sodium thiosulfate, is 0 0.12. Multiply by the titer volume, which is 32.1, and divide that by 1000 to get 0 0.003852. Now, the second step here is to look at your balanced equation. And we know from the last slide that we're looking at our ClO minus is to our thiosulfate. So it works out to be a one is to two ratio. But I don't have uh, two moles of my thiosulfate. Instead, I have 0 0.003852. And I have half the amount of hypochloride in that. So that means I have 0 0.001926 moles of the hypochlorite. So step three then of the first principles asks you to do moles multiply by 1000 and you divide that by the titra volume and you do that because you are trying to find the molarity of your unknown solution. So the moles that we're dealing with is the 0 0.001926 because it's the moles of our uh, hypochlorite ion. You multiply that by 1000 and you divide by the titra volume which is 25 centimetres cubed. And when you put all that into your calculator, you get a concentration of 0 0.07704 moles per litre. So down here in the corner, I'm going to do a part one, which is for diluted, and a part two, which is for the original. So the moles per litre of the diluted, we've just figured it out there, is 0 0.07704. But the original, we know that our dilution factor is a factor of 10. So if I multiply this by 10, I get 0 0.7704. So that means the moles per litre of my original is 0 0.7704. So the next part that we want to do is we want to do part B, which is grams per litre. So again, I'm going to take the diluted form. So we know that if we want to go from moles to grams, you have to multiply by the molecular mass. So here we need to multiply by the molecular mass of sodium hypochlorite. And we need to find the molecular mass of the sodium hypochlorite, which is NaClO. So that is 23 plus 35.5 plus 16. And that gets us 74.5 grams. So I'm looking for the diluted. So I do the 0 0.07704. I multiply that by 74.5 grams and that gives me an answer of 5.737 grams per litre. So that is the grams per litre of our dilute solution. So 5.737 grams per litre. So for the original, I know that it's dilution factor of 10, so I just mul must multiply my answer by 10. So that will give me 57.37 grams per litre of my um, original. So the last thing then I want to do is I want to do part C, and part C is percentage weight per volume and it's important to remember that percentage weight per volume is another way of saying grams per 100 centimeters cubed so here for the diluted one i have 5.737 grams per liter so to find uh, grams per 100 centimeters cubed i actually just need to divide that by 10 and that gives me 0 0.5737 
So that means it's 0 0.5737 percentage weight per volume. So that's for our diluted, 0 0.5737%. And then to find um, the original, I know the dilution factor is by a factor of 10. So I can multiply this by 10 and I get 5.737%. So that is the answer for the original percentage weight per volume. So what I'm going to do just to make this clear for you is I'm going to highlight all of the original answers in orange. So there's the moles per litre. Then I have the grams per litre. And then I have the percentage weight per volume in uh, the original. And I'm going to do the dilute ones in blue for you. So there's the moles per litre in blue, the grams per litre in blue, and the percentage weight per volume in blue, all for the dilute. That's it for this video. Have a read over the learning intention to make sure you understand everything we've gone through.